Rusbar Wallen, welcome back to Jewish Money Matters. How are you? <laughs> really good, Baruch Hashem. I'm so glad that we're following this up. There's too much to talk about. I know. I'm so glad that we're doing a part two. We were talking about financial anxieties and how to deal with it. And you were so generous um, and being very honest about your own personal journey um, with understanding your own money story and your own money hangups, as well as your spouse and how to deal with that. Um, and I think it was beautiful because sometimes we feel like we're alone, like, oh, this is just me. But it's not just me. Um, we all have, like you said, we all have our financial boo-boos and stories we've made up as children that um, um, kind of come up in our adult life and trigger our behaviors and our attitudes. And exactly. Narrative. Right? Narrative. Narrative that we've created. And you know what? It's it's interesting the words you use. Stories that we made up as children. Mm -hmm. We didn't really make them up. but We the didn't. We didn't because it's, don't we interpret like, let's say yes. we saw, we yeah. of, but, but we were children and we interpreted Ex them as children. Exactly. As the smaller, receptive, dependent person. And right. This is, it's, it's interesting that you use those words because I need to state an important premise for your audience right mm -hmm. here, right now. Mm-hmm. People say, but if I've had these triggers since I was five years old and when my father yelled at my mother for spending too much money on a on a, a takeout dinner or, or a piece of meat or something, right? And that happened all the time. And I've got that trigger. So, but now I'm 46 and what the hell do I do? Right? You say, it will not take as long as the problem has existed for you to undo the problem. And oh my gosh. This here is, is cool. why. So this is why I needed to interrupt with this little thing that you said, because it's so important. We were children. We received them as passive individuals, these messages. And however they came about. So like last time I said, it's possible that during tax season, my husband with a very deep baritone voice only said something very nicely like, Rustavar, could you please get your receipts from such and such? And I went, ah. because of my old trigger, those were not us creating things. They were impressions that really happened to us. Mm -hmm. So parents yelling is... And, and maybe us getting hurt in some way, God forbid, by it psychologically, emotionally, physically, in any other way, seeing things thrown or people, I, I, you know, or whatever. I don't know what the financial or emotional boo-boo is that causes a, a person could have financial trauma that has nothing to do with a financial trauma from when they were younger. They could just be insecure about general things. Mm -hmm. But it's the way we interpret the world as children. Now we mm -hmm. are... Adults. So here's the difference. And this is why it takes much less time for the intelligent adult who's willing to help him herself, who is willing to kick their tuchus right mm -hmm. now. It's not just willing. Sure, I'll come to appointments with my coach, with my therapist. But if I'm just listening like a passive receiver, I'm not going to get the benefit of the moment and I'm not going to speed the process. Mm -hmm. so here is where let's tie last time's concept to today and now and how we're going to go forward with the replace it models. We are now adults. Mm -hmm. We have hopefully a more mature attitude about money and about our spending and about our relationship with our spouse or friends or business or workplace about money. And if we've got a financial boo-boo, we're interested, we're intelligent enough, we're willing, we're proactive. And now in this proactive stance, not the receptive little child who's passive and doesn't know what to do about it. We now have skills and we're mm -hmm. gonna learn the skills from our coach, from our financial planner. I'm on a financial journey. So how does this connect with the replace it concepts? Going back to the Viktor Frankl co concept that I mentioned, between stimulus and response, there's a space, and that space is our power to choose our response. Mm -hmm. 
in our response lies our growth and our freedom. So freedom of choice, literally, free will. Freedom of choice does not exist if there's no space between stimulus and response. And that's last time we talked about the meditation. Slow it down. Remember, I got to slow it down. That's on my wall there. Slow it down so that you can be present and notice what you're doing. And I mentioned three stages, swimming with our eyes closed, banging into the wall. <laughs> Swimming with our eyes open, but banging still into the walls of the pool. Mm -hmm. Swimming with our eyes open and banging less and less. There's stages in the therapeutic process. And then swimming with my eyes open, I'm in my lane and I'm doing a successful, effective, efficient lap. Mm -hmm. Okay? And not banging and having my eyes open and knowing where I'm headed. How do we do that with A, the slowing it down and B, the replace it? Of mm -hmm. So I would say if I wanted to, to bring uh, the Torah into it, I would say the Rebbe, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, our Rebbe taught me the importance of creating the power of neutral meditation. Mm -hmm. So one, my response to the Rebbe's request, he requested this power of version. This helps a person become present and slow it down a little. That creates a space, right? Space right mm -hmm. now. If we're aware that we're thinking negative thoughts, so that's already, was a, we call in Yiddish a madrega, that's already mm -hmm. a level. Am I even aware I'm thinking these negative mm -hmm. thoughts? Am I aware that I'm being triggered? Am I aware that I'm yelling at my my husband, my boss, my my friend, my loved one? Because I'm triggered by this concept, mm -hmm. I'm not aware. What the heck can I do about it? Now, on Tess Zion Sivan, mm -hmm. the 16th of Sivan, <laughs> in Hayom Yom, the Rebbe's calendar about emotional and spiritual and psychological concepts and reminders about our Jewish dates. He says on that day, for a person to heal, he needs to know what his problem is. Mm -hmm. So this is the slowed down, Victor Frankl Dicker, mindful awareness. Once we get to that presence where we're slowing it down, there will be mistakes and it's okay. Mm -hmm. But the neuroplastic effort of the repetition slows it down, diminishes it. And I use what I call my army of defense, the IDF. <laughs> the duration and frequency start coming down. So what was the I? IDF, intensity. Oh, intensity. Mm -hmm. Duration and frequency. Mm -hmm. So these thoughts come up less frequently. They are shorter. I'm able to get off of them quicker. They're less intense. And as we practice, whatever the practice is, whatever your coach or therapist tells you to do, your, your thing might be get into a program that puts $1 a day into a blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So I've gained 365 or however many days, uh, dollars in, in, in the year. I don't know what your recommendation is for someone a little bit more wealthy, maybe to, and maybe that 365 goes toward a trip that they really couldn't fully afford. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Some people are really strapped. Right. Today's economy, don't even ask. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Those people might be thinking about it all the time. Right. Wealthier people might be thinking, how can I shift my money? How can I make margins? How can I mm -hmm. make investments? How can I? But that's also, we're, we're enslaved if we don't have this mental control. Mm -hmm. So the Alta Rebbe, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, the first Lubavitcher Rebbe, explains in chapter 12 of Tanya a fascinating concept. To me, it's really, remember, I've told you that um, my company's name is Torah Therapeutics. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it's all there. Just keep, like Ben Bogbog says, keep turning it over. Keep keep looking, looking, looking. You'll find it. Well, I keep seeing it. So I'm not even, I have eyes open. 
Mm -hmm. Rabbi said, open your eyes and you'll see. Yes. Right. So you have to intentionally. That's what being an adult in this process, you're intentionally trying to move forward quicker at, with the adult mind, with the mm -hmm. practical, intentional mind. So the Alter Rebbe tells us in chapter 12 that the Benoni, the intermediate, hopefully we are all not fully evil people. And mm -hmm. I know certainly I'm definitely not a Tzedekas. I, I, I know my inclinations. We will not talk about them in this podcast, <laughs> hopefully not publicly either. But he says that the Benoni, the intermediate person, is able at a certain point in his, her, de, their developed mind, mm -hmm. spirit, with the struggle between the godly soul and the animal soul, is able to create a little bit more supremacy of the godly soul, mm -hmm. better balance. We tip the balance so that we're not, let's just say, triggered spiritually all the right. time and disrupted. So it's a fascinating thing, which was only thought about in the 20th century in cognitive behavioral therapy, the concept of a thought interruption. Mm -hmm. and these, according to Hasidus, stem from the, the animal soul. And what we do is we substitute them with either positive or neutral or holy thoughts, depending on the con context. Mm -hmm. And it helps us stay spiritually focused. And the Alter Rebbe is talking about Yetzirah, evil inclination. So resist temptation. Mm -hmm. And it could be thoughts. Negative yeah. thoughts are, are not healthy for us. So let's just say anything that's detrimental is either Yetzirah or negative. We'll, we'll, right. whatever, we'll just use the word negative right now. Right. Okay? Evil inclination, we'll just call it negative. Mm -hmm. So in CBT, there's a concept of cognitive restructuring. Uh -huh. First, as our Rebbe told us, you got to identify the fact that you're having it. Be aware. Be aware that you've got this problem. Right. And then CBT, challenge the negative thought, replace it, substitute it with more positive or healthy or realistic ones. Sometimes our thoughts are just baloney. They're, they're, they're not accurate. And our mind is driving us nuts. Yeah. Alter Rebbe wants us to lasso it. Mm -hmm. First, we need to become aware. So mm -hmm. that's mindful awareness. Mm -hmm. You know why I don't use the word mindfulness? Because type it into Wikipedia, Buddhism or something of the sort will be like the seventh word in the definition. Okay. Right. Okay. So becoming mindfully aware, like Viktor Frankl's presence of mind so that we can choose and have conscious thought, intentional thought. So now... The Rebbe says, I'm going to call it three stages. The yeah. In chapter 12 says, become first, you got to become aware of it. Like the Rebbe says, mm -hmm. you're aware that you're thinking it because you can't do any thought substitution if you didn't have the thought. Right. You're aware of the thought. So let's say, and I give an example in some handouts and I'll happily send them. So first, the person's aware. Mm -hmm. Example, guy's driving to work. He's been to work 20 years. He's got this like on back of the, you know, like he go, he turns the wrong way. He goes, oh, shoot. I'm such an idiot. What the heck is wrong with me? I've been driving here 20 years. Well, no, 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 no. I'm going to be late. They're going to be upset at me. I'm going to lose my job. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose your job because you turned the wrong way. Just calm it down. Slow it down. And turn the right way. Mm -hmm. If you don't slow it down, and if you don't calm it down, and if you're not aware that you're going nutsoid, there is absolutely no way you can come back because usually it'll be a series of foibles and follies. Right. We're going to turn another wrong way. Oh, shoot, it's a one way street. Or, oh my gosh, now I'm in traffic. And mm -hmm. it'll be worse than it was initially. So mm -hmm. well, that person maybe pulled over and settled himself down and just got to work. But that's not healthy what he did to himself. 
Mm -hmm. and it activated a system and it's a repeated thing based on whatever our trigger is. Maybe I was once late and the boss yelled at me. And so now this is next time he's got, he's got the skill. He's been practicing the thought substitution skill and he's on his way to work and he turns the wrong way. goes, shoot, I turned the wrong way. Keo, stop, stop right there. Okay. Turn the right direction. Look at your GPS. Find the best way back to work now. Mm -hmm. Get it together right in the here and now. Waste less time between stimulus and response. There is a space in that space. That's our freedom to choose. Right. No space. We're banging it to walls because we're just moving too fast. Mm -hmm. We will never make good financial, social, emotional spiritual decisions never mm -hmm. never land mm -hmm. so the first stage is i'm aware that i am am upset at myself stop is the next stage the alter Rebbe says use he says there it's a fascinating vocabulary that he uses he says push it away with two hands right now you don't push thoughts with hands thoughts are in your head you can't fit your hands in your head what the heck is that mean? So clearly it's symbolic. Okay. And the Rebbe says they're forcefully with great force. Mm -hmm. Okay. So two hands are better than one. But I have my own, I'll call it novel interpretation, which I have not read anywhere. But because I know a little Hasidus and I know a little psychology and I got a beautiful Rav, I brought it to him. And he liked it. And it goes like this. In the Torah, it says many times that the right hand is the hand of kindness and loving. Mm -hmm. The left hand is the hand of givura, of strength and forcefulness, or restraint and holding backness. Right. The Alter Rebbe is telling us, use two left hands. Be very givuridic and forceful and double the negative uh, the, the the energy against that negative mental thought mm -hmm. the, the, the force the mental force use all of your energy both left hands why because mm. you mean mekareves usmol doche the mm -hmm. right hand brings closer and the left pushes away we want as much pushing away force as mm -hmm. possible that's my concept mm -hmm. push it away doubly the ultimate right so the hands although you can't stick your hands in your mind or your head or your brain the hands represent this double force against the negative thought mm -hmm. and then we have that space we're creating a vacuum right another so new space mm -hmm. Maybe Viktor Frankl, a Jew in the 20th century in, a, in concentration camps and before and after created these ideas about our freedom of choice. But the Alter Rebbe is telling us, create this space, this vacuum. Push it away. Now you've got an emptiness, a vacuole. Now replace it. Right. Put something, and I will say either parav, neutral, positive or holy mm -hmm. so neutral might be because i can't think of anything right now because i just had a, a little misunderstanding with my husband about finances and now my heart is pounding and i'm like and i've got to go into appointments soon and i want to get myself back together let's say so i push it away and i say go outside oh the weather is gorgeous even mm -hmm. if whether it's positive or negative uh, oh the weather outside look at the weather even if you can't go upstairs and go outside look at the weather 73 degrees what a wonderful day sunny in buffalo swap it out for right. anything get mm -hmm. off that train mm -hmm. now that train it's not a train i call it the machshava merry-go-round it's the <laughs> go round of the mind and that merry-go-round, I teach my clients, you got to get off of it as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you're even seeing it early enough mm -hmm. before you get on. Mm -hmm. 
to catch yourself before right. the happens. Right. Once you get on the merry-go-round, it's as if, this is my muscle, my analogy. It's as if mm -hmm. that 23 year old kid who's making money for the summer. So this kid is supposed to press the button two minutes. Okay. One minute and 30. You know what? I want a hot dog. I'll be back. Let's leave it going. Goes to get a hot dog with everything on it. He takes time, puts the pickles and the relish and the mustard and the, it was so good. I need another mm -hmm. one. And he gets another one. And now the ride's going six minutes. And right now he says, you know what? Let me, let me go get a doll for my son. And he, goes, <laughs> and he goes and plays a game and brings it home. Right. You get it. And, yeah. And he goes back to the ride and it's okay. I'll, I'll press the button. And now the, the riders are worn out and <laughs> busy and overwhelmed by the length of the ride. They thought right. they on a two minute ride. He went and got cotton candy after that and leisurely walked back to his post. Okay. This is what happens when our minds go unchecked, when we don't have the capacity to come back on our own and we don't have any skills mm -hmm. and the ultimate hasn't spoken to us yet today. What we need to do is train ourselves to slow things down. So mm -hmm. for some people, as we said last, last time, some people can't get into their spiritual life so intensely because they're preoccupied. The Rebbe is saying, use something neutral. Right. Don't talk cause them to try to be spiritual when they don't even have the capacity and even a person who does have the capacity either way this is a medical a, a clinical support right so use a neutral part of clinical support so as you practice meditating i also teach breathing mm -hmm. so relaxed breathing and the idea with breath work conscious breath work conscious breathing is to be able to gain capacity over your body right so if we can slow down the mind we can slow down the body i use breathing all the time i've told you about my fitbit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And right now we're about where we were the other day 76 i'm even more because i i'm moving more and it's early in the day right mm -hmm. so so the point is is you can slow your breathing to lower your heartbeat, your body's system. You can breathe faster if you're feeling depressed and down and de-energized. And those negative thoughts are not just anxiety provoking, but they're depressing, mm -hmm. right? And you can use the breath to stabilize and ground by using even breathing. Same count in as out, depending mm -hmm. on the person's capacity. So then we use the body. So we've used the mind with the meditation. We use the body with the breathing. And the third leg of the stool is the soul with the bitone stuff. Right. By right. the way, I've sent pe people to, to your husband's podcast. Mm, good. Yeah, because I want people, let's say they're driving. They can't read their, let's say, letter or they're doubling up. They did it last night in bed with, mm -hmm. with the cashew. They did it last night in bed. Now they can listen in the car and double up. Right. So all these things allow you to do the Alter Rebbe's chapter 12 technique. Mm -hmm. As if you didn't even hear the horrible messages you were giving yourself that you were harming your body, your mind, your nervous system, your spirituality, your mental health and everything through the repetition of these negativities then you can't do any of this work. So somehow we need to be able to train ourselves and practice the thought substitution. So now right. what I have done, and I'll give you the packet. So I've created a packet. And first it has an article explaining, okay, there's another three. In Chabad Hasidus, I don't call it CBT, I call it CBD. Right. <laughs> The other CBD, I, CBD is good, but this is the other CBD, Chabad, <laughs> Pachma, Bina, and Da'as. And in this CBD, what we do is we talk about thought, speech, and action or behavior, deed. Mm -hmm. And the thought technique, we start with. Yes. Why? Right. Why? Because 
in these garments of the soul, these three levels are called thought, speech, and action. Thought is the innermost. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's hard as hell to get off that merry-go-round of the mind. Right. And that's why we need to not even get on it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Thought is the deepest and it's unchecked because there's nobody helping us there. Speech, people could say, no, that's not true. Mm -hmm. It can, or you hear it and it's more profound. You say, oh gosh, I shouldn't say that. And behavior is quite outside of us. You could think many, 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 many thoughts in a, a minute. You can speak many words in a minute and you can do possibly a couple deeds right. in a minute. So these many, 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 many thoughts, unchecked, unreplaced, uninterrupted, unawares, go berserk on that merry-go-round of the mind. And the boy goes for his hot dogs and his cupid doll for his son and his, ah, and we're, we're worn out. Well, and they're determining how healthy our emotions and our behaviors are going to end up being <laughs> as literal as they're going to be, bud. Exactly. So we're not, so what happens is we're still invading our mental and emotional and spiritual space and physical and neuroscientific space with these thoughts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the key is to not get on the merry-go-round to begin with. Right. But... There is a person who has a story and they're so married to their story, right? You've seen it, right? They you hold it. on. It's like, it's like, no, I want to hold, hold on to that narrative for dear life. <laughs> yes. So if that person is coming to you or me or a financial advisor or someone who's helping them become more mindfully aware of their finances and how their negative thoughts trigger them, if they're actively, proactively, intentionally exactly. involved in the process. They might be scared, but they'll say, okay, when I go back to my therapist, we'll talk about this. Exactly. And I'll keep reminding myself to do what she asks. Now here is in your packet, the thought techniques handout that goes with it. Mm -hmm. It's a grid. So now with neuroplasticity, you must practice over and over and over. Guess guess who knew this principle? <laughs> the Rambam in Hilchos Deos, chapter one. These traits need to be repeated over and over till they become memorized. Right. And, and, right. And be because the other stuff has become memorized. It's a habit. That guy who has all that it is. Right. All it is is a habit but that we, going back to that concept, it doesn't take as long to heal as it did to get hurt. We were unconscious mm -hmm. when all of those things happened to us. Now mm -hmm. we're consciously. Now we're conscious, right. And we're proactively involved and we're going to someone, a third party to, to be the outsider. So we're not stuck in our heads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So what does this handout tell us? First, it says, what was the date of the incident? So now we're going to track our idea. Wow. We're going to track our army now. How did I get disrupted? And what was the disruption? And how did I interrupt it? And so this is the Alter Rebbe's technique that I've put into a grid. Mm -hmm. that was the date and time. It was five o'clock on a Monday after everybody came in from camp and starving. They, they gave them a crappy carbohydrate ridden snack and drink at, at, 3.30 and their stomach is growling up the wazoo. Okay. And I just got home with them and the chicken and vegetables. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm also starving. <laughs> and I'm also starving. Okay. And I'm ready to rock. So that was the time. 5.30 Monday, the 21st. Or wait, 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 no, what's today's? The 22nd. Okay. Then what was the precipitant. I was hungry. I was hangry. My children were hungry and hangry. They were just coming home from work. It was a stressful time. Okay, what was a precipitant? That mm -hmm. was a precipitant. What did I do to interrupt my thoughts? So now, if you're with children, sometimes you need to figure out a way to escape mm -hmm. or do this work in their presence and 
temporarily you may need to be less mindful of them so you can get your own <clears throat> act together, right? So you might need to say, excuse me, you guys, here's a bag of such and such, go to the kitchen table and devour it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and big child, here's a pitcher of lemonade and feed everybody right now and get out of my hair. And you pull yourself together. And then, <laughs> then you're a better mother and you wouldn't have given them that chips and you wouldn't have given them that lemonade, but and you're a okay. better mother. Exactly. <laughs> so maybe it requires a thought interruption. Maybe it needs you eating something better. So then you come back. Now, in the thought process, maybe they're not there. Maybe it's later on and you're yelling at yourself for being such a horrible mother. Right. Right? And it's the nighttime and you don't have much power or strength. Now you're going to practice and do another thing. So, okay, it was Monday the 22nd. It was 10 o'clock p.m., all right? My first precipitant thought was, I am a crappy mother. My interruption, I said, stop. I used my hands. I used my head. I used, you need a device. I, I, I have people use a stop sign or a stoplight in their head. They imagine a stoplight. Right. right. Or they imagine a stop sign or they imagine their hands pushing away. I had one client, very clever and art, artist, she said, I imagine a cartoon character pulling a curtain closed on the thought. Nice. Okay. So now you've got your stoppage, your vacuole. Now, what do you change it to? Oh my gosh. I They are the luckiest children. I am such a good mother. I, I, I made a foible tonight. Tomorrow, I will, I will just squeeze them up and love them up and say, I'm sorry, mommy is trying to learn a new technique to not yell. That's all. That's all. Or mommy didn't give you the healthiest snack last night. She feels bad. That's all. Mm -hmm. She loves you. Right? So you correct it. And each time you you write one of these incidents, you become aware. Right. And you, you practice the thought interrupting technique and you write it down. Now, my clients don't have to, but if they're willing to bring it to me, then they talk about it. And they replay it. That's another neuroplastic practice. Exactly. They tell me their success. Usually it would have taken me two hours to get my mm, together. Now I came back in five minutes. Mm -hmm. He said, here, kids, here's your snack. I'll be back in five minutes. And I went to my room and I ate my my egg with olive oil. And I, and I got myself together with a Poland Springs water. And uh, hi, kids. Love you. We're making chicken and veggies. Why don't mm -hmm. you do your homework or you do your play or do your hobby or do your music or, and come back at exactly 6.15. See you soon. And then you are the mommy that everybody schmubs up. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can. And this saves us and our loved ones. I just gave a little- 100%. Kacha Kucha, seven minute talk on self-care is anything but selfish. Why? That's right. Because if we don't take care of ourselves, if we don't take the mask down, we're not going to be able to help our loved ones. So the thought technique requires lots of intention because it's the deepest of the garments. It's too far in. Right. So, so Rustafar, as you're giving us the example, number one, I'm understanding that it doesn't take as long to undo this narrative as it um as it took to create it because we're now mature adults who can actually take ownership and control and make a conscious decision to work on this exactly. and i'm hearing your example and i'm thinking this is so applicable to marriage and money oh, because okay. for example anything she and, and let's say one spouse one spouse is driving to a meeting or about to take a boss their employer's call or whatever it is and the others and they get a ping that some bill was late or the spouse asked them about a bill on the credit card or whatever it is and this can trigger all sorts of you see they're not responsible. Now it's late. I, I I always knew that I shouldn't have told them to do that. Or why is he questioning the way I spend the money on the credit? Like it becomes like yes. this merry-go-round of thoughts. Yes, Blo blown out of proportion. Out of proportion that now is causing a sense. He leaves or he goes to that meeting. Now I'm alone in my head. Right. 
And now I've got these intrusive thoughts about how irresponsible my spouse is and he doesn't care about me and they're da 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 and I should never trust them with money. But it's a whole story. And then your entire shalom bite is destroyed because by the time they get home or they're present again with you, you're not connected to that person Absolutely. because you have all these horrible things, That's thoughts right. about them. And I know your audience is probably men and women, but I think women will agree that if they don't feel emotionally connected with their spouse or intellect intellectually or spiritually connected with their spouse, the physical relationship wanes. A hundred percent. It's destroyed. And then the bonding is hard overall because the touch, even if it's not sexual, but touch alone produces neurotransmitters and hormones such as oxytocin, right. the bonding hormone that can enhance and reconnect people. And that's why the beauty of our, I believe the Tahara Tamishbacha, the Jewish family relationships laws, I think it's so beautiful because it gives you a gap to think about and to retrain yourself to be in non-touch mode. And then when you're able to be in touch mode, that hopefully will be stimulated and enhanced by the non-touch period. Mm -hmm. You're, you're Rita Zulat Sorachalia, this sine wave of the relationship. Sometimes we make mistakes, but the repair is critical. The coming back is critical. Right. Sometimes touch can be used, you know, as as a coming back. These thoughts, the the Machshava Merigo round that that the boy left his post, right? And our inability to come back requires a continuous practice of such techniques as my mm -hmm. thought grid based on the Alta Rebbe's technique by practicing this as often as you notice. You're not going to notice all your negative thoughts. Right. I told you, thoughts come thousands and thousands of them, whereas speech comes hundreds and hundreds of them and behavior comes ones and twos of them. So practicing this and logging it in and reminding I'm doing it and I'm catching myself, even if it's one a day, mm -hmm. like a vitamin, it actually neuroplastically, because you're intentional, starts moving the, the, the ometers down, literally. Right, right, right. What I see is when this, when they, when people go into this Marshava uh, merry-go-round, they can't even see anymore the good about their spouse. It becomes this one financial thing be, becomes such blown out of proportion, well, right? It's hard to create the new neural pathway now when we're on the Machshav America round. So let's, let's pretend, let's pretend we have a little four-year-old niece or nephew mm -hmm. and we're at the park. Mm -hmm. And the mother says, I'm, I'm going to go and take care of some things I'll be right back. My sister, my brother, whomever, right? And take her on the merry-go-round. Okay, so we're walking up to the merry-go-round, right? And it's silent and it's, maybe there's a gentle music playing in the background, but it's not moving and nothing's going up and down. And we put the little child on whatever horsey or lion or, or zebra or whatever she picks. And we sit next to her. And then the music starts getting a little louder. And now it's starting to go very slowly. And people are able to still get on or off. And her zebra goes up and down. And guess what? She's scared poopless. Her mother left. And I, even though she loves me, at this point, I could say, okay, honey, do you want to sit with me or go off? Sit with you. So I can take her off of the pulsating, going up and down zebra. Mm, right. Okay. And she can sit silently with me in a chair or an animal that doesn't go up and down. And she might say, no, I want to get off. At this point, we still might be able to get off. We get off safely. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now her crying or her disturbance is interrupted. We go and walk to where mommy is, text mommy, okay, and all is well. Right. Okay. That is a metaphor for what goes on in our mind. As we practice the Alta Rebbe and the Rebbe's technique, 
we got to figure the thing out and be aware that we're thinking the thing, right? We interrupt it with whatever, the stop sign, the curtain. We turn it around to something neutral, positive, or holy, if we can. The more we practice it, the more we're available. So let's go back to the neuroscience. Mm -hmm. What happens if we don't go off? What if it's too fast now? Honey, we can't get off. She mm -hmm. might be screaming bloody murder in mm -hmm. my lap for two and a half minutes. Hopefully he's not leaving. Right. Okay, you get what I'm saying? So we don't want to go there. That's not a good place to go. If you can prevent yourself from the disturbance. So you get off early, but... Why is it possible that we don't? How come the intelligent adult person is so triggered by something that happened to her when she was five years old? Her mother left her at a, I don't know, uh, at, at. No, her father uh, didn't pay the bill. So you get an email that your husband exactly. didn't pay the bill. Oh, he's like my father. He's going to leave us. He never no, paid no, the bills. Exactly. So you absorb that old thing gets triggered and now you absorb it and full force and so mm -hmm. the merry-go-round is loud and up and down and fast and you cannot get off and the guy left and he's eating his hot dogs and his cotton candy and he's got a beautiful doll for his son oh my god it's <laughs> gorgeous okay it's terrible because now because i've been crying incessantly for five hours i got a headache right and i go to sleep with a headache and i wake up feeling mm -hmm, crappy mm-hmm and it, it it just, it's not good. So, you, you know, Oscar Wilde, he was a very, very funny writer. He said, thinking is the most unhealthy thing in the world and people die of it as they die of any any other <laughs> disease, right? <laughs> we kill ourselves with our thoughts. And, and frankly, sure. according, according to neuroscience, we actually do activate the nervous system. We can right. cause cardiovascular problems. Okay. Endothelial problems. It's not good. So why can't we come back? Because the prefrontal cortex, mm -hmm. the executive, the CEO of the brain mm -hmm. went off line, just like Friday. Right. Shabbos, they're trying to pull the world together through the uh, the whatever you want to call it, the security system from Microsoft, <laughs> right? Whatever it was called, something strike, right? Yeah, so they struck all of us, right? Mm -hmm. And now cyber strike or whatever the thing, I forget what it's called. And now everybody was offline. So that's what happens when we get emotionally activated by a trigger, the amygdala, which is back and earlier brain, the limbic mm -hmm. system brain, more like the animal soul, let's just say, is close to the brainstem, which is just total reactivity. Now, the prefrontal cortex and the Broca's area, which is the language center of the mm -hmm. brain, ah, they're, they're brain dead. And you might've heard this expression, dumbstruck. Yeah. You know what that word means? What is dumbstruck? Oh, what about... Deaf, dumb, and blind. What mm. does dumb mean there? One cannot speak. Mm. Dumbstruck literally means a stroke. Speechless. Speechless, exactly. I'm dumbstruck. I don't even know what the hell to say now. Wow. You can't even come back. Now, this is a phenomenon that was observed, but before MRIs and PET scans and CAT scans, they didn't see on an MRI, an fMRI that the Broca's area of the brain went down and the prefrontal cortex went down. But wow. the word dumbstruck, if we looked up Adam online, the etymology of the word dumbstruck. Okay, so, wow, okay. Old English dumb of persons mute, silent, refraining from speaking or unable to speak. Wow. Dumbfound. Strike dumb with confusion or perplexity. 1650s. Wow. They knew neuroscience. By the way, so did the Torah because mm -hmm. I can't help it. I'm sorry. And Parshas Va'era back to this neuroscience of the brain 
as we calm down and as we come down our ometers and as we practice these three tools that are going mm -hmm. to pack it, the thought technique, the CBT technique that is parallel to chapter 20, 12 of Tanya, mm -hmm. the interruption, the thought interruption and the vacuole, the vacuole that you create to be able to change the thought is also a CBT thing because now you're 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 figuring out how to dispute it without mm -hmm. disputing it without wasting your energy in the disputation creating the ability to think openly to something else now as you practice that you get less inter intrusions less interruptions all the ometers the idf come down and now you've got that space now when a spouse or a loved one or a boss starts talking about something financial, your heart doesn't go pounding out of its chest and the, the mind doesn't go on the merry-go-round and your bitachon in Hashem does not, or your boss or your husband or your finances or yourself. Bitachon atz me, mm -hmm. right? Trust in oneself is absolutely critical. Trust in one's loved ones is absolutely critical for us to do this work. It's not just Hashem. As you practice trusting Hashem, you can trust others. Mm -hmm. As you practice loving yourself and taking care of yourself, you can take care of others. So this, this work starts bringing us down. The next, the next technique is a speech technique. It's positive affirmation. So I have people talk about their finances through positive affirmations. So once they've done some logging of their thoughts and they've got this technique and now it's starting to happen automatically. They see that they're doing it day to day and mm -hmm. negative thoughts are coming fewer and fewer. Now, if they're able, they go into the affirmations and we actually compose them. I've got a handout that they can right. type into and a whole formula. It's mm -hmm. got to follow a particular formula because in fact, some affirmations do not work if they're not composed properly. If you just take a Louise Hay book, God bless her soul, I, I loved her. But if you just took one of her books and read the affirmations, they may not apply to you and it right. may do harm instead of benefit, which actually happened to a person in a webin a, a workshop that I gave once. Wow. For Beis Hana, a, a single mom. A single mom, she was upset. She says, I read Louise Hay and affirmations don't work. I said, oh, Louise, hey, okay, so tell me about, okay, she said to do mirror work and mm -hmm. I'm overweight and I want to be attractive enough to get married again. And Louise, hey, says, look in the mirror and say, I love my body. Oh. I love my body. I love, and it hurt me and I gained weight. Of course it did because you're, that's not, that's not wow. helping you. That's, that's, that's actually going against you're you're it, it's it's dissonant with your 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 needs hmm. so then i taught the class a few months later the person contacted me that she was a kala that she was engaged oh baruch hashem she had lost weight she didn't even need to go on a diet she just stopped beating herself up she used positive affirmation she used food ideas that she knew already don't we kind of all kind of know most of the basic things, right? Mm -hmm. not, to, not to overeat, not mm -hmm. to eat late, not to eat too much junk, not to eat too many things that come from the cabinet, mm -hmm. eat more from the perimeter of the, the, the store. If you can right. buy organic, do it. More veggies. Well, who does it? Don't we all kind of know those? We haven't even talked about toxins and chemicals and stuff. Right. Don't we all know those basic things, but who does it? Who does that really, in fact, unless you're consciously aware and you've got a little bit of self-control mm -hmm. and you've got that freedom and you've got the capacity to do that, you can't do it. So getting back to this, so you do this thought technique, the affirmations would be something like this for finances. So the rules go like this. Mm -hmm. It's about me. Don't worry, I'm going to send you everything. So- it's about me. So it's in the first person. I. Right. Mm -hmm. I. It's a positively worded wish. So I'm not going to say something like, um, I'm not going to fight with my husband about finances anymore. 
okay? Because the, the subconscious hears fight, fight, fight <laughs> with the husband, fight, 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 rah, rah, rah. Then it needs to be in the present progressive tense, not Louise Hayes, the present tense. I love my body. That's not true. That is a lie. That will not work. Right. The um, brain will resist it. I don't speak ill to my husband about finances. I don't yell at my, no, <laughs> no, it can't be in the present and it can't be negative. So the present progressive, I'll give you an example in the moment, in, in a moment. So progressive means the verb is going. It might actually have the letters I N G at the end to help you find one of those words. Mm -hmm. right? a present progressive. I'm becoming, I'm learning, mm -hmm. I'm trying, I'm making efforts to, I'm t doing practice toward and then the third, uh, the, the the fourth element is, it's not too hard to say so that it's a lie and I'm stretching beyond. Like, even if the person said more and more, I'm loving my body, but looked in the mirror and didn't believe that mm -hmm. it matter if it's present progressive and positively worded, if it's a lie, it's freaking lie. It's not mm -hmm. going to help. First. And then, but not too easy. So I don't step up the, the ladder of improvement. So let's say the fighting with the husband about finances, it goes like this. More and more, I'm making efforts to be aware when I speak to my husband about finances. I didn't do anything yet. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to become aware. Maybe because they say like the limit should be five. So we give maybe five related to finances. So mm -hmm. now I'm going to, I'm going to spontaneously let's improvise and let's write all five. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's do one for the person who is always feeling like there's not enough. There's never enough. Okay. There's never what I was going to do is five different ones for that person, but let's keep going. Oh, oh okay. Okay. No, no, no. Whatever your preference that what it's not. I mean? enough. Well, it could be that person too. So that person my thing, I, right? Because that's why she fights with her husband. I was I brought up poor, and my father was an irresponsible drunkard and never mm -hmm. paid the mortgage, and we had a bankruptcy. And my poor mom later on, after the divorce, my poor mom, a single mom, worked her took us off to be able to pay for our school and our college and our seminaries and our yeshivot. And okay, so there's lots of boo boos there, mm -hmm. and now this guy is spending up the wazoo. Mm -hmm. okay. It could be the same person who argues with her husband. So here's her next affirmation. More and more, I'm doing things to strengthen my confidence about finances. So maybe once a week, she watches a video. Maybe she buys the book by Rabbi Lapin. Yeah. Right? Maybe, you know what I'm saying? Maybe she reads that. Maybe she top. listens to this podcast. <laughs> Maybe she listens to your podcast. Every you week, it, religiously. Right? You get it? Not weekly with an A, but weekly with two E's. <laughs> so you you get it? So the affirmations have to be honorable. If I'm not going to do the things that are in the affirmation, it's, it's, it's harming me. It's depleting me. And every right. so often with my clients, some of them love them. And sometimes we do the affirmations with additional things. Beforehand, I tell them to breathe slowly, use the breathing contest, exhale longer so that when you say them, you're really present, you're in the intention. Mm -hmm. And while you're saying them, haven. Oh. Self-soothing gesture of hands like a mother would do for her baby hold or cuddle the baby's hands or stroke the face or hug the baby. You can self-soothe. I noticed once with a very stressful couple where the husband are that kind of guy, I noticed that I started rubbing my legs just automatically. I wasn't trying to haven. It was just like, we need to self-soothe because I needed to stay regulated to be able to stay with this couple and hear what they were saying and not co-disregulate with his insanity mm -hmm. do you get it yeah so these so that's the affirmation let's say a, a third affirmation could be i'm practicing techniques to stay calm so i can have more space to make a better mm -hmm. choice or respond better 
Mm -hmm. Right? Or Those it can, it, kind of things. Right. Can it even be? It even be totally different affirmations, but they all are satellites poking in on the same main idea that I have right. news with finances. Right. Could it even be I'm becoming more responsible with my money if yes. she's now committed and to looking at her bank true, account? If it's not true yet, mm -hmm. I'm learning things to become more to responsible. Become more. You get it? It needs to be in the formula. It needs to be honorable. It can't be too hard and it can't be too easy. You need to be going up the ladder. It needs to be a little nudge, mm -hmm. a little nudge, but it can't be too strong that I'm just going to drop it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got it? And so they can all apply to the same matter. Then finally, the action. So that was thought. The Alta Rebbe's and the Rebbe's technique of knowing what the thought is, catching it, interrupting it, turning it around, replacing it. Mm -hmm. Then the affirmations, they replace our thoughts and right. speech. And then action. You know, our Rebbe says, the Hamaisa hu ha'ikar, action is the essential thing. Mm -hmm. What's fascinating, you know, you're, 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 you like Hasidus, so you'll appreciate this. You know how in Hasidus, everything is the best. Like, <laughs> is the best holiday. Purim is the best holiday. Yom yeah, Kippur is the best Hanukkah. holiday. Because <laughs> each one has a specialty. Or in the, in Sefer HaOmer, right? <laughs> chesed Shebe Chesed. No, Yisod Shebe Yisod. No, Chesed Shebe Kippurah. <laughs> everything has its milas. And here, right. thought, speech, and deed. Also, each has their Mila. As mm -hmm. we said, the Mishnah Perki Alva says, Maha Maisa hu ha iker. The thought right. is great, but the Maisa is the Iker. Speech. It says, Hakol, the voice, Ma'orer, wakes up, arouses, inspires. Hakol, Ma'or es ha machshav. So the call, the voice, is what's Ma'orer us. Mm -hmm. so, and then it says, thought Makshava in the previous Rebbe's diary in a, it's called Likute Diburim. This is something for the average person. This is not a mimer, a deep discourse. This is not a sicha, a lighter spoken uh, speech talk. This is even lighter. This yeah. is in a book of reading, like his memoirs. This Anecdotes. Yeah. Anecdotes and stories about his life and things that he taught. The first thought is machshava, mm -hmm. mo'alas, thought is potent. Mm -hmm. And one of the people at the Fabrangan that he's Fabrangan at talking about this idea of the potency of thought, how it can affect things at a distance. Someone says, how do we know that? He says, where were you last year? Oh, I was in Siberia or something like that. Oh, but I brought you to, that's how, that's how you're here. I, I brought you to mind. We know stories about, Reb Mendel Futterfoss writing right. a, a letter, writing a mental letter to our Rebbe. But you could say that's a Mendel Futterfoss, it's a chassan of the Friedrich Rebbe. The Friedrich Rebbe wrote this book for us. Mm -hmm. Not Sadikim, not Chachamim, not Geonim. Right, meaning we all have this power. For Joe Average. And you and I know this as women. What I'm saying is, and how many times do you have a sister or? I'm an only child. Your only child. Is your mother still with you? Yeah, Baruch Hashem. So Baruch Hashem, do you ever think of your mother and the door, the phone rings? Oh, yes. It happens all the time. Okay. So you understand the phenomenon. Hey, if we didn't believe in this phenomenon, you wouldn't be, I'm in, please God, a Tehillim group, a Psalms group every night for the hostages and for the people of Israel. And the world and the insanity of the world. That's right. I'm saying Psalms for people. If we didn't believe Machshava Mo Ellis, that thought was potent, why would we pray every day? Why would we mm -hmm. say, Bahot? why would we even ask Hashem? That means He's hearing our thoughts. Others are hearing our thoughts. Others are being affected by our thoughts. If Machshava weren't Mo Ellis, we wouldn't do it every day. A hundred percent. And, and, Sorry, but wicked people believe they can do it. We know that there were people who had bad thoughts, the Hamans of the world and the Hitlers of the world and those people. You know, their thoughts had potency, God forbid. They should ever happen again. So mm -hmm. we have the capacity to train our minds. Let's just 
we understand the basic principles. If the person is willing to do this work mm -hmm. actively, intentionally now, and she's willing to make the efforts to do the practice, there are many practices that will help her slow things down mentally, physically, spiritually, so that she can have the capacity to make better choices. To take action. To take action, to not react but to exactly. respond, right? Mm -hmm. Between stimulus and response, there's a space to get that space. We need that space. We desperately need that space. Yeah. We have so, that so space. Again, even though we may not be done with our work, like the other day or a couple of weeks ago, I pulled out three very valuable Pyrexes the wrong way with one hand. I knew yeah. I needed to take them down. I saw myself do it. I saw myself swimming banging into a wall <laughs> and I banged into it anyway and broke some valuable stuff and cleaned it up calmly and mindfully I was barefoot I said go get shoes go get the broom as soon as my husband came in I said don't walk in the kitchen yet I'm sweeping up a mistake <laughs> <laughs> right but there are ways to react I could have gone on the Mach of America and <laughs> and 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 hurt myself and and cut my feet and done all sorts of crazy things right right and what i love about this is that it it, it positions us to take better actions be it look at the accounts be it have a money date with your spouse where you can now speak calmly and rationally yeah. and be yeah. it called the accountant and you've been pushing it off forever you know yes. all those things by the way, by the way, I, I told you, maybe that's the next one. I have a whole handout for budgeting. For oh, yes, that you give couples. The, the other thought I had is, as people are on this path, they need to have other people and other supports who are live not just the therapist whom they're paying 250 bucks a week to, not just the coach, not just the, 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 the financial planner who's investing their stuff or the bank manager who's getting them the loan. It's, mm -hmm. it's not sufficient to speak only to those people. You need a confidant who listens, whom you trust. Now I finally feel, and I've done this a couple of times. I've spoken to my nephew, Ben. I followed a couple instructions that he gave me. And now I'm at the next stage and he gave me another set of instructions. I'm in the midst of developing those things. And then I'm going to go through something that should really, I hope, be very expansive, like on a on a monumental and exponential level. And yeah. it's been a hard practice. I, I have to tell you, at the beginning, I really felt insecure about my finances because of the old boo-boos. Mm -hmm. I'm getting stronger. And it's about practicing the thoughts, practicing the behaviors, reading more. I love the Lapin book, We're looking things up, asking questions. It, it cannot just be that one appointment a it week can't. or it, once it, a month with your financial planner. It's, it's not so interesting you say that because I see it. I have a membership community and I see that so much of what happens is not, not me guiding them, but them helping the community of ladies helping each other and sharing their journey with each other, the support, the not being alone, okay, the brainstorming so together. Important. It's so important. Another plug for your for your podcast <laughs> and your group is that group support is even better than individual support on some for levels. Sure. On the individual support, the advantage of the, this is always the best. No, this thought is always the thought. The chesed is the best. No, no, no. So individual support is the best in that you can reveal things that you would never reveal in public. For sure. But the group gives you a momentum in the, in the momentum right. of the and action. They, they might give you ideas. They might say, this is what I did last week. It really helped me out a lot. This happened last time I met with my husband and this is how we overcame it. And yeah. it helps her as she's, you know, it, it's amazing. By the way, I have another thing that I implement with my couples. I have a lot of shluchim couples. Those are right. adversaries of the Lubavitcher Rebbe who live out of town, uh, even if it's in a big city, but they are responsible for educational, social, spiritual programming for their communities. And um, 
many times finances are very, 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 very challenging. My yes, clients. So what I want to tell you is I teach them three different, I call them three marital meetings. Okay. Every week that the couple should have. The first one is usually Saturday night if it's later in the year or Sunday morning. It's called the practical household and or Chabad house businessy meeting. Okay, who's picking up the kids, who's buying, who's going to Costco, who's ordering the this, who's who's dropping them off, who's going to the doctor, who's who's paying for this. Practical, financial, day-to-day -day responsibilities pro pro project the week. Yes. The next mirror and and that should only be those things. There's no BSing. There's no all right, you're allowed to have tea and crumpets if you want. You could have mm -hmm. a little snack and okay. Then the next marital meeting is the couple's intentional dialogue from Harville Hendricks. Almost all of my couples have learned this. It's a way to communicate without having a fight and you're just expressing something. It could be a compliment or an issue, a concern. Mm -hmm. and the person needs to repeat it on three levels. The first level is parroting it, mirroring it. The second level is an acknowledgement or a validation. Don't we all want to be validated and heard? And then the third level is trying to empathize with the person. So we practice that one night. There is no fun and there's no business and there's no arguments allowed. You have to just practice this extra. It's a simple exercise. Mm -hmm. It's not going to make you fall in love with each other immediately tonight. It's it's just an exercise. You do one, I do one. You want to do two? Okay, you do one, I'll do another. That's it. Then the third marital meeting is a date. You're not allowed to bring any of the issues on the date. Right. You're not allowed to bring any of the, oh my gosh, tomorrow you don't forget to pick up the kids. So you do that when you get home. The date cannot be infected and infested and mm -hmm. And, and harmed by so we're going bowling and we're gonna go get some snacks afterwards. We're gonna we're gonna go swimming. We're gonna go go to a concert. We're gonna go have dinner. We're gonna go play a game. We're gonna go watch a silly thing with snacks. That's it. That's it. Nothing it's, else. It's so that's, interesting. Mm -hmm. That's part of that's almost like replace it because we've yeah. compartmentalized for sure. Right. This thing that I'm thinking about right now is inappropriate right now. I need to save save it for another time because I'm going to sleep mm -hmm. or because I'm going to another client mm -hmm. or because I'm going to see my husband now and I don't want to be in a bad mood. It's so interesting that you teach this because it's the same thing that I teach them with the money date. The money date is the only space where you talk about money. Something pops up in your inbox. It goes in the agenda for Sunday's money date. And that's so let's it. say a bill or a bill, a, a call from the school, whatever it is. Oh, it goes in the agenda. And okay. outside of that money date, there You're is no conversation during that. the week about money. And people okay. don't believe me that 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 they're actually gonna get to that place. Well, and I say when you the neuroplastic effect of the practice, the right when you practice this and you stick to this regularly scheduled safe spaces to discuss money. Those emergencies that you're always on emergency mode, they're, they're right? They're not going to happen. There are fewer emergencies because now you're so in touch with, oh, what, what, what's the cash flow? What's coming in? What's going out? Oh, they, they get so that's why. So that's exactly why all of these separations will create good boundaries, right? Exactly. Good fences make good neighbors, right? So then you can actually really have a date exact exactly really, now, let's say beat the hell out of him in bowling because you mm -hmm. used to be a good bowler or or laugh to the silly com comedian or you know slap each other five after you you, you both accomplished something or you both painted something at the pottery place that are gorgeous i don't know but you're really in that and you're not thinking, oh, mm -hmm. shoot, I got to pay that bill. When are we going to pay that bill? Exactly. Oh, shoot. We need to, we need to. Uh, yeah. Make Just like it takes so much real estate space in your brain, it takes the real estate space in your entire relationship. It's, it's not a way to do it. And, and by the way, I, right. And I tell single people to do this too. Have a time that is for your money and that's it. That's it. Meet, meet with yourself. If you can't meet, meet with yourself and your money, that's it.
And and again, in in our let's just say sort of Judaism, the Rebbe requests that we each take a mentor, a mashpia. So that mentor could be one of those people that we see outside the professional exactly. state, right? And maybe even get ideas to be able to bring to the husband on the meeting or what you need to bring up in your couple's dialogue. Exactly. Right? Or even ideas for dates. I've got lists for inexpensive dates for couples. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, because financially we- Ristavora Wallen, I love everything you're teaching us. This is really, really helpful. I hope it inspires people to really work on their thoughts and getting off the machshava merry-go-round and creating that space to replace the thoughts and to take positive actions with their money, with their marriage, and with everything else that goes on in our lives. Thank you so much for your wisdom. My honor, my pleasure. Thanks.